Hi, I'm Bill Platt, General Manager, Migration Services with AWS. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about continuous replication and how we can help you deliver application resilience using AWS. Our agenda for the day, we'll talk about application resilience, an overview of AWS resilience services, and then we'll get specifically into AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery and AWS Resilience Hub. What do we mean when we talk about application resilience? It's the ability of an application to maintain availability and avoid or recover from disruption. Resilience is measured in recovery time objectives and recovery point objectives. IT resilience is becoming more important than ever. Threats are constant, never changing. Having a solid strategy is place is the best way to protect your organization from disruption and data loss. According to a recent IDC report, 90% of organizations acknowledged having been attacked by malware with 87% of those having been attacked successfully. Their findings show that one third of organizations have suffered events that prevented access to systems or data within the past 12 months. Unfortunately, too few organizations are fully prepared to recover from a ransomware event, as evidenced by the IDC finding that fewer than one third of organizations attacked by ransomware were able to fully recover their data without paying a ransom. AWS offers many resilience services that work together to help avoid disruption and to get your applications back up and running should a disruption occur. One of our newer services, AWS Resilience Hub, is shown along the top. It works with AWS CloudFormation or AWS Service Catalog App Registry and allows you to define the desired resilience for your applications. Resilience Hub also allows you to create tests to check the resilience. And these tests are used by AWS Fault Injection Simulator, FIS. FIS executes pre-built tests, which coupled with the assessment offered by Resilience Hub, allows you to identify resilience weaknesses. Resilience Hub provides you with architectural and operational recommendations to improve your resilience. For purposes of this presentation, we're gonna focus on two specific services, AWS Resilience Hub and AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery. As I mentioned in the previous slide, Resilience Hub offers proactive testing and is designed to protect weaknesses that, to reduce the risk of an outage. But outages do happen. That's where Elastic Disaster Recovery comes in. Resilience Hub, based on recovery objectives, makes the right recommendations, and DRS keeps rec applications protected through continuous replication and gets applications back up and running quickly. What is AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery? It's a flexible, reliable, and highly automated service that minimizes downtime and data loss by quickly recovering your services on AWS in the event of a disruption. DRS, as Elastic Disaster Recovery is known, with that, you can meet stringent RPOs and RTOs, reduce idle recovery site resources, and lower disaster recovery TCO. And you can use the same simple process to operate regardless of OS version or application. You can conduct frequent DR drills without impact to replication or user activities. And you only pay for what you need as you go. You can quickly recover your on-premises and cloud-based applications using AWS DRS. DRS reduces costs by removing idle recovery site resources and you pay for your fully provisioned disaster recovery site on AWS only when you need it for recovery drills. For AWS-based applications, you can use AWS DRS to recover applications in another AWS region, which can help you meet resilience and availability goals for these applications. DRS allows you to use the same process to replicate and recover all of your on-premises and cloud-based applications across all supporting OS versions. The quick, simple setup process includes initiating continuous data replication by installing an agent and defining your replication and launch settings. 
you can conduct non-disruptive tests to complete the setup. You maintain disaster recovery readiness by, maintaining, by monitoring data replication and performing periodic recovery and failback drills without impacting replication or user activities. If you need to recover applications, you can launch recovery instances on AWS within minutes using the most up-to-date server state or a previous point in time. Your recovered applications run natively on AWS until the issue at your primary site is resolved. At that point, you can initiate data replication back to your primary site. You can fail back to your primary site whenever you're ready. After failback, simply terminate your launch recovery instances to avoid any leftover costs when you return to normal operation. You can also choose to keep your applications running on AWS after recovery and decommission the original source servers in your primary environment. Many customers with a variety of use cases have successfully implemented Elastic Disaster Recovery. Thomson Reuters is a good example. Thomson Reuters is a news and information services company that provides solutions for tax, law, media, and government across 100 countries. Its business unit, OneSource GTM, helps clients meet compliance for their imports and exports through its software. To store and process its large amount of data, the business unit was using an on-premises data center, which comprises over 300 servers. Before setting up a DR site in the cloud, it relied on a second nearby data center and replicated its full stack on tapes. The process required a significant number of resources, and staff had to travel to the secondary data site to retrieve the correct tapes if a DR event occurred. The company wanted to improve and automate its business unit's DR so that it could replicate and recover its workloads to achieve faster recovery and minimize data loss in the event of a service interruption. Working with our partner Capgemini, Thompson Reuters selected Elastic Disaster Recovery. They're now able to continuously replicate data in a low-cost staging area on AWS, which reduces its compute and storage footprint to a minimum and reduces the need to provision duplicate resources. By minimizing the costs associated with manual labor, on-premises hardware, and compute resources, the business unit has optimized its spending on disaster recovery. Moreover, it is able to scale its data pipeline to replicate over 120 terabytes of data. Since adopting the new solution, the company's replicated its full stack, which includes its operating system, web application, client databases, directory services, and antivirus software in the cloud. Additionally, OneSource GTM's team has freed up the time it spent maintaining its previous DR process and has increased staff productivity. Now we'll talk a little bit about AWS Resilience Hub. Let's look at some of the key capabilities. The first one is very important, and that is you define your RTO and RPO goals for a particular application in a resilience policy. There are a number of disruption types that we allow you to capture, including application disruption, dependency on a single piece of infrastructure, AZ, and an optionally a region. We do assessments to see if you can meet your own policies based on the resources you use. We will recommend architectural improvements and, oper and operational items, including standard operating procedures, usage of systems manager, and CloudWatch. Our integration with Fault Injection Simulator allows you to run resilience testing through Resilience Hub. You'll also have a view into your application via the dashboard. You can do this from the console, or you can integrate all of this in your CI CD pipeline. If you're working with a number of applications, a portfolio will provide a resilience score for that portfolio. This indicates where you should dive in to improve resilience. And of course, there's an audit trail which will help you with compliance. Let's talk about some of the key benefits of Resilience Hub. As opposed to on-prem data center business continuity and disaster recovery, which uses semi-annual or annual resilience testing, Resilience Hub provides continuous validation and tracking of resilience. You can decide the frequency of tests. You can test every release, you can test monthly, once per sprint. But the point here, is that you can do it on a much more regular basis. You can gain granular control over resilience by assessing and validating each element of your application. 
You can have confidence that your applications will consistently meet resilience targets, and you can identify issues before they're in production and before they actually cause an outage. Identifying issues before they cause an outage certainly is very useful for mission critical applications. You can have confidence that you set up the right operational items and that you've done the right things from an architectural perspective. And you can validate that through fault injection experiments on a regular basis. Cost is also an important factor. You don't wanna overpay for res resilience that you don't need. Our recommendations have a cost aspect to help you understand your options better. And again, from a compliance and regulatory perspective, the audit trail we keep will help show you are doing the right things in terms of application. Resilience at the right price. That's what we're trying to make sure you can achieve with Resilience Hub. And with that, I thank you for your time. Appreciate your listening to how continuous replication can help you achieve your application resilience goals. Thank you.